reason I tell this story. I tell this story partly because I want you to know my heart. I want you to know what I work on, what I care about, what I think about before I wake up in the morning and what I'm still thinking about when I go to bed at night. But I also want you to hear this story because I grew up in an America that was investing in kids like me. It was an America that said, work hard, play by the rules, there are real opportunities for kids like you. The way I see this is America did something extraordinary coming out of the Great Depression. It made two fundamental decisions. The first one was to stop the boom and bust economic cycles, realizing that you know they could feel good on the upswing, but on the downswing, they wiped out a lot of people and a lot of good people. So we'd had boom and bust in America basically from the 1790s forward, roughly about every 15 years. Following the Great Depression, we put in place some basic rules that bought us economic stability. FDIC insurance, make it safe to put money in banks. Glass-Steagall, banks are not allowed to do crazy things and take high risks. SEC, put some real regulation on Wall Street and try to keep that an honest game. And for more than half a century, it worked. And we did not have financial booms and busts, no crisis. But we made a second decision at the same time, too. And the second decision was one about our collective future. It's not enough just to say we don't want things to break. It's what we want to build. America built a middle class following the Great Depression. And think how we did it. We did it through education. We invested heavily in public ed education from, from first grade through high school. Public universities, we put big money into public universities. A GI Bill, we said a grateful nation says to our returning veterans, we'll help you get an education because we know if we do, you'll get out there and help this country even more. I'm a product, I'm a post-Sputnik kid, <laughs> and America was worried that we were falling behind. So there was something called an NDEA loan for kids like me, and that was we'll lend you money and then forgive up to 15% of the principal every year if you'll go into certain kinds of occupations, including in my case, teaching special needs kids. America said investment in education matters. It's part of our future. We also invested, think about it, in transportation, all the infrastructure. We built the national highway system during this period of time. We invested in water and sewage, the kinds of things that said you can make products and you can get those products to market. We invested in mass transit so that workers would be able to get to the jobs. We invested in power. It was 20th century power because that was the best we knew in the technology, but we kept investing. And we fundamentally built a country that said, if you work hard, you play by the rules, you're going to make it. You've got a real chance to make it. And here was the second part. And better yet, your kids are going to do a little bit better than you did. That was what it meant to be an American for more than half a century. And then, about a generation ago, we lost our way. We turned in a different direction. We turned into a country that said, I got mine. The rest of you are on your own. That became our national conversation. So that we became a country in which profitable <coughs> companies Companies whose profits are measured in tens of millions, in hundreds of millions of dollars, could pay nothing in taxes. While we say to young people, you have to take on even more debt to get an education, we say to seniors, you may just have to learn to live on less. This isn't right. This is not the America we want.